Good evening to everybody who has joined today for this webinar on international exposure. Is it relevant today or not? You all know the world today is very different from the one that we were living in a few months ago. There is no area, no industry, no aspect of life across the globe which has not been impacted by COVID-19. Education has also not been left unimpacted. There have been some areas which have been more badly hit than others, but none has been changed, has, has been unchanged. We all are here right now to talk about how education has been impacted, how international education or international exposure as part of education has been impacted. We'll be discussing this with a person who knows this close at hand, and that's Professor Sankal Chaturvedi. Professor Sankal Chaturvedi is an associate professor at Imperial College Business School. He also heads the Gandhi Center for Inclusive Innovation at Imperial College. We are very lucky, we are very lucky at BML Munjal University that we've been associated with Professor Sankal Chaturvedi since the beginning of the university. Uh, Imperial College, you know, was our academic mentor right from the beginning. Professor Sankal Chaturvedi, it's our fortune and privilege and pleasure to have you today with us to talk of international exposure. Is it why is it important for the student, especially in the current situation? To begin with, uh, we all know, we all seen how education has got impacted since March, uh, mid March, and we kind of uh, worked hard to kind of uh, keep the pace, uh, keep up the pace with it. But having done those initial changes, uh, we know things are going to be different going forward. Mm -hmm. Would you kind of uh, share your thoughts as to what are the big changes that you're expecting in education or you're witnessing in education right now? Um, Professor Davinder Singh, uh, thank you so much for the invitation, your kind invitation. Um, and uh, it's a pleasure to, to meet you and talk to you about uh, various things that are happening in the environment currently. And I would also like to welcome everyone joining us uh, in this webinar. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, if you do have any questions that you would want uh, me or Professor Singh to answer, please try to use the Q&A option that is created uh, so that we can actually try to make this uh, a much more engaging uh, because Professor Singh and I discuss these things quite frequently, but uh, the, the, here the audience is you and your questions, uh, which would be actually much more useful. So, so please do engage with us. Uh, so we want to interact with you and try to get uh, your questions answered uh, overall. So going back to Professor Singh, uh, obviously, uh, when we are thinking about the, the impact of coronavirus uh, impacting the world, nobody was uh, actually expecting it. We always started looking at this as an environmental shock uh, where we had to react. Uh, lots of countries, lots of people, leaders, students were caught into this dilemma uh, because of, of this sudden shock that they had to in the system. Initially, it did may make a difference uh, for us to understand what was it, what can it uh, do. Um, the lifestyles have changed, the markets have changed, uh, we are getting into deep recession. So those things are the realities of, of, of the impact that COVID is causing us. In specifically towards the education, uh, if you think about international education has so much to offer uh, in the sense, because when you are trying to expose yourself into different environments, uh, different challenging environments, you learn a lot more. And that has been always the case um, in, uh, in trying to adapt uh, to, to the new, new things. Unfortunately, um, so if you, if you think about what has actually happened, um, lots of uh, universities have shifted uh, their mode of teaching, which was much more experiential in-person engagement has changed dramatically to remote uh, involvement. So instead of talking to a human in person, you are actually trying to talk to somebody um, on a Google classroom or a Zoom meeting or a Microsoft Teams, you're trying to engage with your camera so that in principle you can actually try to engage with the audience, whether it's your classmates or whether it's you're talking to faculty members. And if you think about, if, if I'm trying lots of challenges with that as well, because if you're not getting the feeling of engaging, what you're trying to do is you're engaging with the camera. So you have to pretend, and if you're not looking on the side or looking on the side, 
people are thinking you're not engaged with what you're talking about. So it's a two way problem wherein uh, people are not thinking you are engaging them. And from the faculty point of view, we are not able to engage you as much as we would have done it in in person environment. So internationally, if you look at the exposure element, uh, it is traditionally very, being very useful uh, to get used to a different way of thinking about things. But because of the change, there has been a digital transformation uh, for some universities more than the others. Some other some universities, international universities, already have a sort of a global MPR, uh, MBA program of sorts, where they are used to digital programming and digital teaching. So they have tried to make sure that these contents can be delivered. So they are adapted. It. But unfortunately, not every university is equipped and competent to deliver these things. And these things do take time because the trick is not to create a platform to talk to you. The trick is to engage you. And that's where the puzzle is. You have to be engaged in a virtual way, whether you have a virtual platform where you can actually respond to. And that's, that's the real key. Unless you have trained and treat this as a skill that is needed to engage differently, it will be really hard to create experiential way of learning. If you look at traditional, again, that goes back to one of the questions, what has been in the past and what's happening now? If you look, look at the research on the systems, you will find that most of the MOOCs, that's what they were traditionally called, were a failure. And you will be surprised that lots of institutions, universities are actually coming up with uh, products and a MOOC system so that they can reach out more people and they can try to engage with more people. But what was found is the, the success or the effectiveness of them was not as strong. And the key reason was that, that I can, I can try to teach you something, but if a student is not willing to learn or is engaged with social media or distractions or family or trying to go, and I'm doing a tick tock exercise, I am not learning. And the learning, the trick of learning is actually to make sure that you listen to me, what I have to say. And you are responding to me, you are interacting with me. And that's what completely changes the way we, we think about learning. And that is the reason why, even though we have shift, shifted, uh, you will realize that the new trend of digital transformation would be there to stay for long. The inhabitations, people, the inhibitions that people had earlier with a digital platform will go away. The only thing what people will do is trying to make sure that their teaching style uh, is as effective pedagogically in a digital world than uh, uh, it was in the physical world as well. And that's the key issue. And we, we are adapting. We are adapting because of reactive pressure of the environment. But again, uh, it will take some time. Uh, from students' point of view, uh, you, you will have to find ways to engage. And the model is, is what you have to think about to make it more effective as well. Right. And I mean, you're, you're right. Uh, when this... Uh shift had to happen, it happened for all of us, you know, for the students mm -hmm. and for the faculty at a very, very short time period. And it basically meant we shifted from in-class, in-person delivery to online, you know, through a Zoom or a WebEx or a Google uh, Classroom, whichever mode one could lay hand on. Mm -hmm. So it basically, a screen re replaced a classroom. And and that I think that 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 continuity was required at that point in time. Uh, and as we have kind of uh, now realized that it is not a short term phenomenon, the mm -hmm. issue of uh, COVID will remain with us for many more weeks to come. Mm -hmm. And and it also has kind of uh, led to acceptance and adoption of technology mm -hmm. on both sides, both the mm -hmm. student as well as the faculty. But of course, uh, you're very right. Uh, the experience of teaching. Uh, is very different. The engagement is very different. The techniques to engage students, I think, uh, or create a learning environment is very different. And, and, and you mentioned about in past MOOCs. MOOCs came almost a decade or more ago, but never really became mainstream. Uh, one, of course, because there was, there has always been that physical classroom still existing alongside MOOC. And that experience is something which could not be done at, at a MOOCs level. Mm -hmm. uh, so similarly, what would be other than, let's say, the trends? MOOCs was not a, 
acceptable thing or didn't really become big. But what were the things which you would th- which you would say were a strong trends going, especially on the international education uh, prior to COVID? And that then we could kind of see which of which of these you see how they will shift. But before we look at shift, we look at what were the trends prior, pre-COVID on international education. Yeah, certainly. So one of the things that was getting very popular uh, across institutions is this international exposure. And because that in many of the rankings that you know, um, that is given extra weightage. And the reason why it was given extra weightage is because when we are trying to go beyond our comfort zone, our country, our state, is when you're learning more, the new norms, new ways of doing things, new industries, new challenges. And instead of, of trying to be in your own limited boundaries, uh, you were expanding the boundaries to say that it's not my, uh, my well that I'm working with. I'm trying to work uh, around it. it uh, the globe is, is my landscape. And that's what it actually changes to. And you would realize that uh, people get more creative and there is research on that, that people get uh, think very differently uh, if they are exposed to new challenges and uh, new language, new people, new uh, ways of thinking. And that's what actually the exposure does. So things that you are not aware of, you g- get into that unknown and trying to get used to it. And that's what people, people learn a lot more. Um, so, Technically, um, now, if you want to take that experience, um, at least for a short term, uh, that is going to be limited, uh, not only because people are afraid to fly, but it is also about social distancing would be hard on flights uh, to work with. And uh, that would mean that you will have to probably uh, tell or partner a lot more with institutions outside uh, so that they can actually show or create a, a a platform wherein you can actually expose people from the outside world. So it will not be as close as experiential, but you can try to get as close to the experiential video or uh, experience or talking to different people, uh, different institutions, going internships uh, to different places. And that would still be very useful. Um, Again, the idea is to expose yourself to different ways of trying to work with. And I think uh, that is going to stay for long. True. In fact, a lot of uh, companies uh, have been globalizing across over the time and they've been uh, seeing an advantage of taking people who have worked in different geographies, different kind of environments. And a lot of premium was given to people who had diversity of experience Mm -hmm. uh, and to be able to work with people from diverse backgrounds. And I think that was also one of the reasons why many of the students were also, or universities were also encouraging students to get experience of going to different geographies during their studies itself. You know, the exchange programs or short, uh, short-term visits to various places. And I know, I mean, I know from my own personal experience that first time when I moved out of India and went to a different country, uh, I realized that a lot of things that we take for granted, especially our own communication, the vocabulary that we use in communication and speaking with each other, mm-hmm. is so much more contextual. But when you are out of your context, you're in a new context, you have to become very conscious of it. And therefore, your communication skills actually improve a lot. The kind of words you use, the sentence formation, and also the nonverbal cues that you use. Uh, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a great great uh, experience to learn and to improve yourself. So, I mean, since my first visit outside, I've always encouraged everybody, you know, if, you, if they get a chance to go and stay in a different place, even if for a short while, whether as a student or as a working executive, they should really take it up because it just gives you so much more to learn and, and, and observe. Mm-hmm. And, and do it. I mean, there's nothing... Uh, Really, really that you cannot learn, even if you go to Alaska or to North Pole. I'm sure you will learn a lot just by being outside your regular area of, of work. And, uh, absolutely. Miss, something to, to just mention on the research that I, I do on specific of experiences. Uh, we have uh, uh, emotional side and we have uh, uh, rational side in our brain as well. And the things that we actually remember or retain information in our brain um, is actually experiential. 
So you will forget data of, of what people did at what days or names um, after a while. But experiences is that what you remember. They, they have the retention capacity. You will not remember the name of the book, the author, uh, when you are 10, 15 years uh, older. But you will remember one that experience that I went to London, I went to Singapore. Uh, so those experiences are ones that get highlighted a lot more. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Something um, sticks. Yeah, and, and also, I mean, I think today, uh, more than ever, the ability to form uh, connects and friendships with people coming from different places is is very important. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, you no longer can say you know uh, that you are going to just come, spend some time in a place, and then go back. Uh, I think people are should be using this as creating networks, meeting new people, and then carrying that relationship over the years with them. Would you uh, do you see that kind of helping people in their careers or as they move into leadership positions? Have you seen something like this? I mean, at Imperial, you you get a lot of people coming from different parts of the world for various programs. Yeah. How do you see this interaction amongst them going forward in their future? So um, again, um, uh, first of all, yes, um, absolutely. Um, See, one thing that sticks, um, is I, I have done my engineering, my MBA, and my, my PhD, and now working. One thing that has always stuck with me is my cohort. Um, and the need is the network, and they are still in touch. And you can, you can thank Facebook, LinkedIn, you can thank WhatsApp to make sure that people are in that network still. Uh, the, the, you may not be in touch with your faculty members as much as you will be in touch with your cohort itself. And I think that's the biggest part because what you realize is those physical learning as well as offline learning that you had with the cohort builds that trust, the bond with those people that nobody else understands. And I think that is key to make sure that people uh, take it uh, for longer duration. So it's not that I was working with you on a project and that's why I, I remember you. I will remember you because of multiple projects that I did, the the fun things that I did, I had uh, played Holi with you. I played Diwali with you. So those experiences come along in 10 years, 15 years time to actually make sure that you are, you are connected and connected to the deep root levels where the peripheral things are not, may not work. And you never know uh, the, the, the power of networks goes beyond that, right? Uh, if I need something in your country and you, I know that you are there, you already have a network established. So I just need to know you to reach out to the network. If I start my own business and I want to explore that in your, in your country, why not? Um, I think you, I, can, I have somebody I can rely on uh, and I can start processing that information around. Uh, so yes, uh, the importance of network is extremely important. Whether we are talking about digital world or a physical world, that will remain same. Uh, hopefully we will uh, for the short term future, uh, it will probably happen a little bit more on the virtual world than um, than the physical world, uh, but I, I call it a short term problem um, because uh, we can rely on significant uh, researchers, uh, scientists who are extremely working hard uh, around the world to to come up with a vaccine so that uh, we can be going back to the old normal. Um, and I think that is also the key uh, to understand. So you might get comfortable with the technology. The importance of network will they be there. Um, but we also know that physical uh, distance of physical knowing people experiences will matter more as well. Uh, so right. it, ca it can be a bump, but bump will be short as soon as we have the vaccine and we will we'll start moving again. Uh, so yes, networking is important in both worlds. If it's hard uh, for you to meet digit uh, word, uh, physically, try out to meet with, with people, even the strangers. If you're trying to get an internship and you have an interview on a video, and you have been selected. I would strongly encourage students to go and talk to the teams. Uh, I know they will be busy, but you have to be take that initiative proactively, where you can talk to more people. Uh, it's in, in leadership research we call about talk about connect before convincing, and that will always remain the key. So, so make sure that you connect, uh, with, no matter which format that you are trying to do it, but do that so that you can start influencing them. We have with us uh, in the attendees a student, an ex-student from University Harsh Babbar.
All right. She had been to Imperial College uh, for that summer uh, leadership, global leadership program. And uh, more recently, she's still in UK where she's finishing her MS in with West, Westminster uh, Business School. Uh, mm -hmm. Arun, can we get Harsh Babad online and we would like her to share what she gained through the two experiences. The one she went for a short while, for two weeks to Imperial. And secondly, when she has now spent almost a year or more than a year at, at London doing her MS. Harsh, are you here with us? No, she's here with us, right? Harsh, we'd like you to kind of share your experience of, of having spent two weeks earlier in Imperial and then more recently as one year at Westminster Business School. Uh, yeah, I would love to share the experience and thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, and just give me a minute. Yeah, yeah. Hi everyone. Thanks Hi. for the opportunity to join in. Hi. And uh, it is a great pleasure to discuss some the opportunity that the international exposure and what we learn in an environment and what we learn from our, beyond our comfort zone. So yeah, of course I had two exposures. One was a very crisp and short with the Imperial. That was quite uh, intellectual, I would say. I mean, we indulged a lot. We got to learn something. And the best part was that it was my first experience outside India. And it not only motivated me as a person in studies, but as a person in my personality growth. So I got to learn about the culture, differences, the, uh, the way we are here in London, or the teachers, how we interacted with them, their end to, to indulge with them together, and the games, the activities we used to do on the daily basis. That was really quite interesting and indulging to learn in different modes. Secondly, my, uh, this experience is also quite interesting because I have already done my master's with BML and uh, had an opportunity to go to London with Imperial. And secondly, I was already aware of this uh, module system and the subjects we go through. So I was a little bit prepared to take up another challenge. But this time my challenge was to get into something and see as a person I am. So I learned here in terms of studies also, and secondly, in terms of a person to evolve, and the like Mr. Uh, Sankar said, that moving out of your comfort zone is the way to learn. So I actually learned it beyond that. And uh, I would say that international exposure is very important. You guys have already discussed the major points of learning in a new environment, how you integrate to other non-verbal and communi uh, verbal communication norms and other stuff. So I, in the second master's, it was basically like I got to know about my research things. Because over here, it is more of like you get into, the, uh, get into your studies, you need to learn. And then if you are interested to learn, you need to move ahead and move some steps, get into the reading habit, Make yourself more critical in your analysis and how you approach to a problem. And also the teachers over here have supported me in my uh, ways. And the support is given by all, like, even this, um, over here there is, like, community, students' community, which always come up with different ideas to go ahead. And they always try to engage international students, the normal students over here, the locals. And it was quite interesting. Tell me, uh, Harsh, I, I remember, you know, you were, you were one of my students at BM Rumjal University. I mean, I, I clearly remember when, when, when you were going through various programs, one could at some times look, you know, the sense of trepidation of, uh, of not being sure. But when I met you last year, uh, when I was in London, I saw a very different Harsh. And I saw Harsh was so much more sure of herself uh, not the kind of hers that I'd seen as a, as a student. So, where do you think that shift happened? You know, what really led to that shift? Uh, that shift, actually, I started realizing that um, sometimes you have to take a call for yourself. 
and you can't be always just undecisive all the time and of course i am undecisive at times this uh, at this moment also but it's just that uh, i have to make other person see that i'm sure of what i'm take, going to go ahead with so that if i'm sure that other person can also trust me and of course i had two years of work experience i was lucky enough to get my job into hr which i wanted to <laughs> and uh, i had a good exposure in work experience as well there also i learned with an environment that uh, if you have to grow somehow you have to just learn with the surroundings and sometimes adapt and if you're not going to adapt a little bit of the changes you might lag behind all right we have another student uh, ashwarya bhatia who who had gone only for that uh, short duration uh, uh, module to uh, imperial college uh, arun can we get ashwarya also here and uh, we could get her perspective as well but tell me while ashwarya comes on board uh, uh, harsh stay yeah. away from the family staying away from the family when you are on an international thing how yeah. much of a pain or how much of a joy is it and when <laughs> when does it when this when does if it is a pain does it become a joy ever yes uh you can realize the pain only a bit i would say because okay i am a teenager I, okay i'm not that teenager but still i know uh, that i can take up to things so i do miss my family and uh, it is not that painful like i get it for me because i have been out since my whole life uh, from 15 years i have been out and i keep connected with them over the whatsapp calls like the technology digitally we are being so up so we are keeping ourselves so much updated and uh, the happiness is i would say that i actually learned i learned cooking which was not my forte at all i didn't knew how to boil the rice even which i actually now enjoy eating my food which i whatever i cook secondly i managed to work as well part time and i really appreciate that i was juggling between my part time and my uni to cover up both the sides somehow I always get uh, as like harsh can you give some hours this week and i'm like okay i manage i give i'll come i'll come it so i was ready into uh, exposure of the work environment so i really loved my experience over here and if given an opportunity i would like to work here as well great so ashwarya you're here with us uh, nice to have you here thank you so much hi sir how are you very fine so ashwarya i i can you kind of a share what you learned or what what you gained the So there's a lot of noise. Two weeks that you spent in Latina. Latina. I can't hear, hear you, sir. Okay, so I said I wanted to know. Can you share what you learned when you spent two weeks? What are the lasting memories or lasting experiences you had when you spent two weeks in London in summer? Hi, Sankab sir. It's good to see you after long. Indeed, it's a pleasure, Ashwarya. Yeah, two it's two people I remember, and they are here. So, so good to see you too. Yeah, same. Hope you're doing good and well. Everything is safe. All good. Great. Thank Great. you. Hi, Harsh. How are you doing? I think she's left. So, talking about she my did. experience uh, at. Uh, BMU and Imperial. It was one of the like most one of the memorable trip I had in my life. Of course, I was so excited to go abroad for my international study exposure, which is a must in students' life. And although it being my first international trip as well, adding a plus point, and that too with my colleagues and although alone traveling, involved a lot of uh, ups and downs. The things uh, which. Uh, i learned being at uh, icl for two weeks was you know your inner confidence as harsh already mentioned you need to believe yourself first if you can have that confidence that yes you can do it there's no one who can stop you 
just you need a little push which the faculties and the mentors are always there to help you out so first one is, is to have the confidence next which i can think uh, icls provided me is the exposure the the types of case studies we used to study over there the live demo classes the assignments that we used to get we used to go out in london i i still remember there one of the class we had design class which was taken by professor eliana so we had a project to you know visit to various uh, museums or various companies uh, or various street outfits uh, areas and we need to con you know consider like what is the difference between in india and what's the difference in uk we need to compare it so that when we go back to india at least we'll try to give feedback and we can implement those things so we took up mcdonalds and various other companies as a food options to you know compare what all services do have so it was a very live lively experience that we had the projects we used to have we used to have the you know hands on learning on the experience and we used to it actually live those uh, questions which we, which were provided by the faculties to us and presenting them in live in the class and you know with your colleagues was one of the good experience that i had i hope you agree harsh yeah yeah it is indeed it is the case because uh, like you said that going to the museum and doing all the activities that actually made us connected to each other and i really appreciate the enthusiasm of the teachers they indulged us for a short span that was really appreciated thank you thank you both of you uh so yeah based again from our point of view we we always try uh, to connect uh, but again to retain the information that you you guys were coming at 9 and leaving at 6 pm and we just wanted to make sure that you don't sleep in our classes uh, so we have to come up with uh, different exercises that can engage and uh, make uh, your knowledge itself is relevant and significant We still remember, Sankal sir. You've been watching us from the back of the class. Oh, Professor class, Sankal, uh, class uh, bench. Who is operating phone and who is on the screen in the presentation? Yeah, yeah I think. Yes, uh, uh, I, uh, Professor Sankal, would you, would you kind of speak about what are the few things that you take care of or focus on when when students come to Imperial for these two weeks? immersion you know that global leadership what are the few thing that you kind of make sure are impactful so uh, first in um, is uh, we've had several cohorts of uh, uh, bml munjal university coming into london uh, for the the summer school um, so one thing that i i've noticed over times is um, most of the class have never traveled outside and uh, which also is an opportunity and for me personally that's that's a time to think about their overall development uh, rather than thinking about them as their own competence and background it's the, the whole idea of this summer school was designed pedagogically to make it very experiential so that uh, we can actually develop the overall persona of of the the candidate who is coming in and you would realize that uh, they have not been exposed too much uh, to different sort of uh, country different sort of people different sort of food different sort of teaching style um, and uh, their capacity to notice the world around and uh, that's where we were trying to to i don't know whether these uh, to remember but we we keep on talking about this gumption and curiosity uh, as the two biggest things that i actually tell them to start thinking about when they start coming to imperial because we have limited time with them and i wanted to give them a flavor of what exposure uh, international exposure can do and uh, thankfully uh, all of uh, the students who have come in have uh, appreciated our involvement in the program but the trick is still simple uh, people have not been exposed to the unknown and how do you start looking to the unknown with curiosity and that's what if you can try to be open to ideas uh, we need to challenge them and challenging was happening outside their comfort zone if they have not traveled on a tube they have not uh, gone to different shores museums that's the thing i would and I, i also made sure every day in the morning when they start and every time they are coming at the end i kept on asking about what did you read in the newspaper 
And I don't know if, if people will remember, but the idea is looking beyond what you look. So people are used to reading about Bollywood, little bit of India, but not what's happening outside. And the overall, the critical thinking that even Harsh was mentioning can only happen when you're looking around because you need to apply what you learn in outside world. And that will not happen automatically. It has to be trained in you so that you look differently for the question and you're trying to respond differently uh, to the question as well. And because we have so many followers in the world, we have few leaders and leaders are the ones who can critically think through the challenges, opportunities and take challenges as opportunities to deliver that. And that's where my, my key thing was content. You can read, uh, but you will realize that you can't ask the right questions. You cannot ask or make people think critically. And those were the elements imbibed a pedagogically and with the content where we were trying to make sure that people remember that. And I think that's what differentiates of what we try to do pedagogically by design as well. Yeah, I think I completely agree with you. The, the experience people get by interacting with faculty or going out. Uh, for projects or for assignments or even otherwise, you know, spending their free time and trying to understand different aspects of the, of the city. Uh, and that, of course, requires you to be physically present there. Mm -hmm. Now, if we were to look at, let's say, for a few months uh, for till at least for some time when, when the travel and social distancing norms are still there, you would have some restriction of being in different places. What would you suggest to students who are still to go out? Let's say they may not go out immediately, but may get an opportunity six months, seven months, or maybe a year from now. What would you suggest they do now to be able to get the most out of whenever they travel next abroad? Yeah, well, multiple things. First of all, there is hope that there will be a travel. Uh, so no, don't lose out on the hope side. Uh, it will happen. Uh, the trick right now is to, to utilize things your time opportunity at this time because you realize that if you think about the world is on lockdown you should not do anything or keep watching the streaming websites and not spend that time because world is on a lockdown i would strongly recommend to do exactly the opposite because that's the challenge in the environment is the biggest opportunity how can you differentiate yourself in comparison to other people how will you become visible when there are 100 people competing for the same job that you would be competing? Utilize this time, learn. There are lots of courses happening, lots of people. Be proactive. You can, um, we are at Imperial, we are trying to have virtual coffees. And you will like, what, what do you mean? I, I can uh, get my coffee and you can get your coffee, but I'm still trying to interact with someone else. We are having, uh, we have uh, some of our executive education programs. We have already converted to which virtual side and we are not thinking about virtual or digital platform as, as a hurdle. We are using that. How, what next, how can we adapt our teaching style, our content so that we can still make it experiential in the virtual format, because that's what we can do in a limited time because world is not stopping world world is moving slowly, but it's still moving. How can you move faster? And that's what I would strongly encourage your students to think about. It's opportunity is there. This is something to, for you to start thinking what, what does the world need? I personally, I'm, I'm a leadership professor. Uh, recent time I have started working on COVID projects. Uh, if you had asked me a year ago, I would work on something related to virus. I would have said, why me? Never. But now uh, I have multiple COVID projects that I'm working on and hopefully I can help in that uh, domain. I'm learning from, from that. Uh, but Learning doesn't stop because there is a lockdown outside. And I think that that's the key message. Uh, look for challenges as opportunities. Right. And I think uh, the thought is that really, I mean, uh, sooner rather than later, the vaccine or the conditions will improve and travel can happen. And as and, and soon as that happens, there would be more people willing to go across to different uh, geographies and get that exposure. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we would like to take up some questions which have been coming up in the meantime. And the first one is from Akash Agarwal. 
Akash is uh, inquiring whether a program, you know, like this uh, or international exposure, does it help or impact in any way in the placements? Uh, Akash, my thing would be yes, it does uh, in two ways. Uh, one, of course, you know, if if company is looking for people who have had uh, experience across different places, it helps you to kind of show that. But more importantly, is that when you show that you have been in different geographies, even as a student, and you can show that you've learned something unique, which you would not have gained if you had remained in one place, companies realize that you have they have a learning resource, a resource which is which is uh, mindful of the surroundings, which is adding on to the knowledge, and that is what is at a premium today. You know, with the AI and ML, what is going to beat AI ML is an ability to constantly learn. So that's one way you would really be benefiting. It's not so much as saying, you know, you went for a, abroad and that you gain a knowledge in the classroom alone. It's more about how you learn from everything, the experience that you get. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and Professor Sankalup can add on to more to it from his experience because he's seen not just Indians coming into Imperial, but people coming from as far away as Africa as well. And other yeah. places. So, uh, so yes, um, um, I would I like to encourage and uh, see that. Uh, one of the most international universities in the world. Uh, we have been ranked uh, uh, ninth recently. Um, we have been always in top 10. And if you think about international exposure, um, we, we are always there and we count towards international experience to exposure for people means on an average when I teach students uh, I have people from 45 50 nationalities in my classroom and the, the reason is I can teach them the research side of it I can teach them with the applied side application side but you will realize that people's assumptions and norms of people coming from different countries um, challenge each, each other People learn and become more inclusive because they are trying to talk to each other. And I think that's the key. From company's point of view, they want to know whether you are ready to learn differently. Are you ready to accept different norms or not? Are you ready to start blending in because globalization is not going away. You will have to work with the cross-cultural teams as you go along. So these are all things which are adding to the skills which actually ends up on your resume because you have to think about how do you build your resume differently from your own cohort and I think that's what you need to think about so you might be person X trying to join a classroom but you have to differentiate uh, yourself in comparison to all your cohort as well because we, we can have plenty of you for coming from one university but there's only one you so it becomes very critical of how you start thinking about it it's a value addition we have one another question, very interesting one from Weber Mittal. He's saying, how would the global programs be conducted after the colleges are back on the routine? Would it be same in as it was done in pre-COVID times? Or do you expect the changes to happen, even though it is safe enough to travel, let's say? Oh, that's that's a very good question, uh, Weber. Uh, so so basically what I'm, I was trying to to, to hint a little bit earlier as well. In short term, people who were afraid of using technology to use in education uh, from either way, from the, the university side or from the student side, have gotten used to this as a different mode of teaching. The question you're asking is, um, and I am an, um, sort of an optimist in that sense, that in a year's time, things will be back to the old normal. We will remember this as a bad experience, um, the, the COVID side of it. But the good things that will stay out of the crisis is people adapting to different circumstances. Remote working will increase substantially. It has been increasing like up to 170% since 2005 in US. And if you think about from last two, three months, more than half of the world was actually working from remotely. So they are used to the unknowns. And that will probably stick around. So you have seen Twitter, a company, they have started, they have said that all their workforce will be working uh, remote formats. Uh, Facebook has said half of their employees will be working remotely. So those things will continue probably for some time. But especially for the education side, experiential learning will still stay as, as of the topmost way of trying to people to experience things because that information, the effectiveness, 
will stick on your brain. We can try harder and harder trying to do it digitally to give you an experience, but nothing like when you see it yourself. When you have to go through the, the, uh, the, the whole pattern by yourself, you will remember it more. And um, my, my guess is the people will get used to the technology, the platform, but will not replace the experiential in-person learning. So that is still going to happen. And I think technology will only enhance it. You know, it will mm -hmm. not replace it. Let's like laptops have not replaced the thoughts. They have mm -hmm. only enhanced how you express the thoughts. You know, you instead of just plain writing on a on a typewriter, now you can add on pictures and multimedia. Just it, it just enhances you. It doesn't really re replaces it. Uh, there's another question uh, from Nishant. He's he's uh, getting trying to understand more about what how. The programs are structured at BBA level. Is it semester wise or is it uh, how, how are the BBA programs at Imperial College London structured? Are they into semesters or are they into year wise programs? Uh, so he wants to know a little bit more about that. So, Nishant, um, just uh, so that uh, you are aware, uh, currently uh, Imperial College Business School does not offer any BBA courses. Uh, we, we are in a master's, uh, we have lots of master's courses uh, and we have lots of senior programs, but we don't do a BBA uh, currently. And um, so I would encourage you to, to think about, uh, if you're doing it a bachelor's in a different area, because Imperial is a big university uh, and you have a keen interest uh, in a different field from science, technology, medicine, engineering, I would encourage you to see bachelor's program and uh, business school is uh, currently doing only master's programs. Uh, we do have some summer schools for young students, um, but they are not, uh, again, they are for the, again, as I said, undergraduate level. Um, so that's something need to be thought over what exactly you want, how will it add value to your resume? So we also, I mean, we are looking at uh, taking, we have now, the current exist, the incoming batch of BBA would also be included in the uh, global immersion programs, mm -hmm. uh, which we've been doing for MBA in the past. Mm -hmm. I think that's why they're very keen to know, you know, if they were to come to Imperial as part of the glo uh, global leadership program, uh, as part of a BBA program right. at, B at, Imperial, at uh, BML Mundial University. Mm -hmm. So they are trying to understand you know, how, how they would be benefiting over there, what would they be experiencing. So for them, actually, what they need to understand is there is a summer school program, or so, which is different, which is not really meant for uh, uh, for the MB, but it's for th these kind of students uh, who are doing their undergrad. That's what we're looking at. Uh, there's also, uh, people are keen to know that if they were to visit uh, Imperial and were to go through some of these programs, short-term programs, how does it help them in their uh, look in, in their attempt to get, get into higher education at Imperial itself, you know, a master's program at Imperial. That, that's a good question. And um, the, the thing is, Imperial is very competitive. Um, competitive, so you have to stand out, uh, which is compared to the rest of the pool that comes into play. Um, I can tell you when um, currently, when we are talking about the COVID crisis a lot more, the number of applications have increased um, at Imperial in comparison to last year. And the predominantly that is happening because people are utilizing the time and they are thinking about how do we get into a highly reputed uh, university like uh, a ranked university like Imperial. Now, so the challenge would be, yes, um, one thing that we have done because we have been uh, the academic mentor for the BML Munjal University right from the start of uh, its building. Uh, the idea when it was still an idea, we have been part of that generation. So what we have done is made sure uh, that the university is recognized. Um, if, if you have, uh, every university has a list of universities that are recognized, that they consider as good universities to actually start applying for the programs. So as, as you are, you might be aware that there are lots of universities which are recognized versus not recognized. What we have done is made sure that BML is recognized. So you will be considered and you will be competing against all other universities. 
so your the the first screening is already there but the next second and third screening that you have to show is how are you different how can you do more and why this course is actually for you so you have to be competing with the rest of the cohort uh, to to get a, a seat in here as well so something to think over but i would strongly encourage uh, you to think about it because it, it's an important way of trying to step up uh, to and to get that exposure that we are talking about there's one question which is way way ahead uh, somebody is really looking forward and this is from the darshika khone she is saying what is better post doctorate doctorate from a foreign university or a job search after doctorate degree and she is speaking uh, seems to be talking about for physics so if somebody were to do a doctorate in physics should they look for a job search or should they look for a post doctorate somewhere abroad so darshika uh, first of all um, i would strongly encourage you first of all i like your ambitious uh, and aspirational question uh, no doubts about it but if you asking for a doctorate or a post doctoral degree um, i would encourage you to think about the good highly ranked university than thinking about a foreign university going to a foreign country is not a big deal anymore so going to to a university which is very lowly ranked and spending your money to get a doctoral degree is not as useful than if you're trying to go for a higher ranked university and doing a program there remember the idea is you are adding value to your resume so that it can be beneficial lots of universities have doctoral programs post doctoral pro programs but making sure that you are actually doing it in a better place will reap you benefits a little bit more not little bit i i would say significantly more than the lower ranked foreign university so go with a purpose rather than just going blindly or vague saying that i want it from a foreign university so yes uh, the the question is you will realize different degrees serve different purposes so what do you want to do after that degree also has a uh, a decision in what uh, job or which university that you will actually go into if you want to be a research scientist you are a different one if you are trying to be a teacher that's a different one or if you want to be entering a consultancy of sorts uh, the answer would be different to your question great yeah okay uh, we had one more question where the uh, he's saying actually you know there's rohan who is uh, thinking you know in current situation when the covid is still not stable does it make sense to to travel to london uh, because he is still not sure whether the vaccine will come by december or next year so does it does it is it worth coming is it is it safe coming what do you suggest uh, johan um, um if if i have an answer to your question on the covid 19 vaccine uh, i would probably be a millionaire by now um okay. we we are trying something that i can tell you for now uh, we are trying hard i am aware of uh, at least 16 different universities slash industry uh, conglomerates who are working on the vaccine right now and i'm i'm sure that there are more than i know of uh, within uk we are aware of two vaccines trials being held uh, at stage 3 now so there are higher chances but uh we will obviously not risk students uh so it's not something that we would want uh you to be risking your life for uh what we would actually encourage and that's why we have government's policies to make sure that we can work around it or work with it uh in uk as such uh, has not put uh, boundaries on international flying flying india has uh for now uh at least uh, we will see when they the international routes are open again uh but the question is come when you can um, and when it's safe for you to come uh, otherwise uh, we will uh, be continuing our different programs uh, virtually uh, trying to create exposure so it's a choice that you got to make based on your circumstances and the destination that you are hoping to go to uh, because uh, there are different countries trying to follow different trajectories in how they are reacting to covid and trying to recover from covid as well great i think that's the time we have for today uh, thank you so much professor sankal for taking time out and coming here and sharing your 
doing interaction with such a lovely audience. I'd like to thank all the people who took time out and joined this session today. I hope it's been worth your while. And if you have any more queries, please reach out to us. We'll be happy to answer your queries. Uh, and until the meantime, as, as things shape out, we hope things will become safe enough for us to travel across the world and to take our students to various locations, uh, including Imperial at uh, UK. It's always been a pleasure to go there and, and, and interact with, with faculty over there, with you, Professor Sankal. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Wish you, you and everybody at Imperial a safe time till we meet thank again. You. Uh, I need to thank you as well. Uh, thank you so much uh, for encouraging chat and uh, trying to set this up. Uh, for students who are hoping to, to work, uh, the, the only message that I can give you at last is uh, currently social distancing is the only vaccine and it actually I being an Indian origin I, I feel bad that when I'm seeing that is not being maintained um, so try hard wash your hands but social distancing is the current vaccine so try to do that as much as possible and try to tell people uh, around your network to, to make sure they understand that because economies have to open for a different reason we currently don't have a vaccine. So social distancing is the way to go. So, but thank you all for being here and asking very good questions. And I wish you the very best for your future and hopefully would want to see you at BML or at Imperial as well. So thank you for joining us. Thank you everybody. Thank you Aishwarya and Harsh for joining. Have a thank great you. time. Thank you everybody. Thank you.